why don't we do a, a brief question here for the panel um, now that we've had some discussion of uh, reentry and CTO devices. Um, uh, my question is, um, what are people's uh, algorithms as far as choice of reentry device? Say you get down uh, subminimal and you're stuck with a situation in the distal SFA uh, where you need to get back true lumen and, and a wire loop technique has not done that. Do you reach immediately for a uh, Outback, a Pioneer, or another reentry device? Do you favor pedal access at this point? Uh, or do you try harder with a sharp reentry uh, with a CTO wire? Um. So I, I think a lot of that depends on what the distal vessels are like. If, you, if you've got really uh, robust tibial vessels or uh, if you have a really good distal popliteal, it's certainly cheaper to, to use a distal vessel and go retrograde. So that would, that would be something that I would consider first. Uh, if those options don't look so good, then we usually go with a reentry device. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I think it depends on, you know, the patient is a claudicant or CLI patient, uh, the distal vessel anatomy, where it reconstitutes, you know, is it um, where you don't want to extend it and, and make this above knee patient to, you know, something closer to the knee, um, how much calcification there is at the uh, distal cap, um, so all those criteria. But in general, I'm a wire catheter guy. I don't use CTO devices much at all. Um, and the only decision really is tibial access or reentry. Well, I try to uh, restrict my reentry device to the P1 segment, occasionally upper P2. Once I get more distal now, I'm more apt to go uh, retrograde because I don't want to compromise that popliteal segment. Calcium matters. As far as reentry, all out back, essentially. I don't think the chromoflow feature of the Pioneer really works in the small distal calcified vessels. I think the only thing I would add is uh, the collaterals make a difference. So um, I definitely try not to reenter if I think I'm going to lose distal collaterals in the SFA and would favor a retrograde approach. Yeah, I, I try to avoid the P2, P3 segment as much as I can with reentry. You know, and, and if I have to, I'll, I'll have to go retrograde. That's what I will do. Otherwise, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I tend to just go with reentry device first. Um. You have a 200 millimeter SFA CTO. Is your approach going to be an intraluminal approach or a glide wire uh, looped approach? John, we know how you're going to vote, but you can vote. Yeah, we, you know, look, something. It's funny, I, I showed that data in our experience, which is really for total SFA occlusions. You know, you know then uh, one of the you know, speakers showed a shorter occlusion. You know, that one we're more likely to be intraluminal. But, sure. You know, when it's stem to stern, the whole thing, we're just something more we can. I will start with the Vianzo one for I'm still a wire catheter. Yeah, so like Sahil said earlier, I cross whichever way I can get across. So um, wire catheter, I, I, I commonly will loop the wire right away in a small branch, keep the loop small. I used to use a vertebral uh, uh, catheter that was uh, slip tip coated and just spin it gently, advance it. I'm leading almost more with the catheter, and if I stop at that point, then I'll just send the loop down and then just follow with the catheter. And then again, maybe retrograde. Yeah, I think with the elision of that length, sooner or later you're going to end up in the subintimal space, no matter how hard you try to stay intraluminal, and you're going to make a procedure much, much longer if you try to stay intraluminally. So I initially try to use a wire catheter to stay intraluminal, but would be pretty quick to change strategies either to dissection, reentry, or retrograde. Gotcha. So from what I'm hearing, the length is also a determinant of that approach in that if you're looking at something maybe under 100 millimeters trying to stay intraluminal, perhaps, and then longer than that, the frequently switching to a loop, a loop strategy. Proposing to the panel um, that we discuss the development of an algorithm and whether that's feasible uh, and how it could be done. Well, I just want to say that, you know, that is Manas's uh, statement and uh, talks are truly thought-provoking. But, but what I take most importantly, at least close to heart, that the algorithm that the coronary operators have designed are not there to address every, every occasion and every type of lesion. They have been designed so that the adoption of CTO algorithms and CTO-based interventions is, becomes more widespread. I think the first thing we need to think about, at least in the periphery, is how to make more people engage and what is a simple straightforward approach that they can take step by step to get to a certain point, not necessarily in the same algorithm, try to eliminate them on each and every subtypes of lesions and complications. So, John? 
You know, obviously the algorithm is based upon two major components. One is how are you going to cross or recanalize, you know, and the other is, you know, what your definitive therapy will be. And there's almost two different algorithms. Mm -hmm. You know, we published uh, uh, our approach using a cadence strategy for femoral popliteal interventions, and it's uh, clinical, anatomic, uh, device specifications and performance uh, characteristics, um, you know, it's niche novelty and all those sort of, of, of things, uh, cost and evidence-based. Obviously, it should be evidence-based on top, uh, but, you know, we're now uh, only getting enough robust evidence. And, you know, it's an interesting sort of uh, way that we try to do it is because we use sort of the Zagat's uh, guide with these dollar signs to show the relative cost of interventions uh, as well as the effectiveness of interventions with uh, published uh, data. So, you know, again, that's once you cross the lesion. <laughs> uh, although included that as some of the you know, CTO strategies. So two different kind of algorithms there. I, I'm just going to piggyback on John's comment. I think there are two discrete algorithms. One is getting across, and the other is the therapy. Uh, and, and for both of them, we have a Chinese food menu of options, column A, B, and C, in terms of what we can choose to cross, and, and we've talked a lot about that today. Uh, but the therapy part is also critically important. Uh, whereas uh, in, in the algorithm that uh, Subhash showed, 40% of the cost was allocated to the crossing device. I think as we move into a drug-eluting technology era uh, where you're using multiple drug-coated balloons or multiple drug-eluting stents, that is going to be the driver of cost every bit as much as the crossing technology. Um, so I, I think that um, it would be great to have an algorithmic approach for crossing. I obviously threw that up as a softball because I knew that Subash and, and Manas and, uh, and others were going to talk about it. Um, and I think they were, we're underway. Uh, many of us have our own algorithms, and I think uh, a cadre of us will hopefully, uh, r you know, say we're going to just do this and, and then, more importantly, prospectively verify that that's the right approach. I think where we can learn from the coronary CTO operators is that they came up with an algorithm out of their brains and then they prospectively validated it. And we have yet to do that for periphery. I think the elephant in the room, though, is the therapeutic uh, algorithm, and that remains to be a big challenge because we have no head-to-head -head data, uh, and there's a disincentive for our industry partners to, to complete trials where there are head-to-head -head data. Um, so we, we have to do at least uh, the, the crossing algorithm first, uh, but we need to have data for both of these. I think the challenge with the periphery compared to coronaries, I think there's more variability in the periphery. I mean, I think the disease states are um, uh, more complex with regards to our clinical goals. And I think the anatomy is more variable. There's multiple segments, more vessels to consider. So I think there are some challenges in doing an algorithm in the periphery, although I, I think it'd be important. Yeah, tend, tend to agree with pretty much all what's been said. But, you know, again, the, the devices that we have are a lot more than the coronaries. You know, it takes uh, a lot of personal experience with each device. You know, you can't master all the devices. You can't put an algorithm uh, you know, of one, uh, you know, that describe one method, you know, I, I really think, you know, in many times, you know, we go in, uh, we improvise, essentially, <laughs> you know, we're, we're out there, and we make our decisions based on what we're seeing, but it's very clear what has been said, if you have an ambiguous cap, if you have a very long lesion, your approach will be different, if you have lesions extending into the P2, P3 segment, you probably will approach it different, you know, transcollateral approach, we did not mention that, but that's another approach, you know, that we use, so I really think it's down to your experience, down to the type of lesion you're dealing with, down to the device that you're, you learn to use the most, so a lot of variability, you know, I don't think we're very close to an algorithm right at this point. And one final question, um, I think much of the discussion of a crossing strategy and, and algorithm has focused on the SFA. Do you think there need to be two separate uh, algorithms, one that's infrapopatil and one that's SFA? Because clearly there are subtleties uh, in the crossing and the decision to switch strategies in, in each vessel bed. I couldn't agree more, Aaron, with you. That is absolutely needed. Uh, I didn't hear your answer, but I think, yeah, I think there were definitely two strategies. I think in the mm -hmm. SFA, you, you have a lot more bailout options if you're not, if things, you know, big dissection plans, whereas in tibials, you don't have that. Uh, on the previous question, I would just say, I think we're a lot closer to a crossing algorithm than we are to a sort of a, a therapeutic strategy algorithm, mm -hmm. you know, with that. Uh, you know, when, whenever you talk to, if you show a case to 10 cardiologists, it's a cardiology case, you get one answer. You show it to ten peripheral guys, and it's like ten different answers, and they're all right, you know. So, so again, I think. But the, but I think the refreshing thing is, I think from a crossing standpoint, uh, I think we all are sort of on the same page. So I think it's time.